So you watch all these young quarterbacks, and, you know, it should be noted, you were drafted by a team that has proven to be chaotic, San Diego. Okay, It's not like you were drafted by the Patriots or the St. Louis Cardinals in baseball. It can be stated now um, that San Diego, as we just saw in the last year, the stadium moving, it is a fairly chaotic, unstable organization. So you come out as a number two pick. When did you know? And this is not to put blame on anybody because you've really owned your stuff. But was there a moment, Ryan, when you're like, there's stuff here. Like, I remember your rookie year, coaches were already getting fired. Yeah. Yeah, that was the big one. Week five, we're two and three, and they fire my head coach at the time, Coach uh, Kevin Gilbride, who I had developed a, a very good relationship Offensive with. guy. Offensive-minded. June Jones was my quarterback coach. Pretty good quarterback coach. I, I, it was a good place to be, to go through struggles and figure out um, how to be an offensive football player in that league, and it was just disrupted immediately. And that probably was the first sign that they're like, you know, we're, we're, we're willing to just blow things up um, with this 22-year-old kid there, in the and place. There, and there was a lot of pressure on you. I've said this before. In the last, got almost 20 years, the only, like, number one quarterback who has stayed at one franchise, won Super Bowl, has been Peyton Manning, who's one of the great talents in the history of the sport, right? He's right. like a, a LeBron-level player, is that there is pressure. So when I watch Mitch Trubisky, I tell you, Ryan, I look at it and I think to myself, the kid's already getting booed. I know. Mike Glennon, the starter, said, "You caught me off guard. I I don't think it's going to be good. What do you? How do you think it transpires?" Well, it doesn't it doesn't showcase them in a very good light that they didn't talk to the incumbent. Um, I heard there were stories out there about how Coach Fox hadn't even heard about it until up to the last minute. So it seems as they're in disarray, and you're going to bring a rookie in who's only started 13 games in his career in 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 college. Um, the fans are booing, um, which is tough. The reaction from the city when it happened and the shock from a lot of people hearing that they moved up to take a guy that a lot of felt they could have gotten down the line. Now, Ryan, is there a quarterback taken this year that you like his situation? I love Patrick Mahomes situation. Kansas City, Andy yeah. Reid. Why? Andy Reid, offensive genius. And then Alex Smith ahead of him. Good dude. Good dude. Really went through his own struggles in San Francisco early on, persevered. Yeah. Has really become a great, you know, a good, solid NFL quarterback. Oh, takes his teams to the playoffs each year. So it, it reminds me a lot of the John Elway, Brian Greasy scenario in my draft where um, Greasy went to Denver and got to sit behind John Elway and watch a champion. Um, work ethic. Work ethic, how to be a professional um, was very important. So I like his situation the best. I'm a little – Shocked at how it came about just because, you know, you're taking a, a, a big risk on a quarterback from an air raid offense. There not hasn't, a, there's not been a successful air raid not, uh, quarterback in the league ever. Ever. I mean, it, it's, and I, I don't know, like, you know, the schematics. It's like flag football with a little more structure. For me, it's the uh, amount of plays that are in it. We ran something similar um, when I was coaching in West Texas. It's a Hal Mummy, Mike Leach, Sonny Dykes type system um, and it is essentially there's a playbook of about nine to ten passing plays and they're not the, the play call is not long I mean you get into John Gruden or a West Coast offense and in my case when I heard him call a play in my ear sometimes I couldn't remember how we started the play when he was finally <laughs> finished <laughs> now give me an example of of a because by the way the knock on the air raid it's just too simplistic right then you get to the NFL and I've done those with Trent Dilfer I don't know how any of you guys can play. Dilfer says, I go into the huddle with two plays, and I'm like, I don't even know. I couldn't memorize the first, but the typical West Coast offense play would sound like. It was crazy. It was a pro right jet, you know, wax, 29, Y banana, S slide, X Raider or something. <laughs> and it was it was all these combinations and where the funny thing in the air raid, he just would go uh, pro right 94. And that's the play. That's the play. So the, the, the question becomes the huge leap academically. Uh, and I met Patrick Mahomes. Great kid, by the way. Really yeah. nice demeanor, but I, to your point. Okay, so let's go to um, Joe Mixon. So you right now, first of all, explain program ambassador. You actually, you spoke to NFL prospects at the NFL Combine, which I love. Thank you. The NFL takes people who have had struggles. Not your Tom Brady. 
who gets Belichick. No, he takes Ryan Leaf. What do you tell Kai's at the Combine? Well, I was honored enough by the NFL to do this. It kind of caught me off guard a little bit, and then I really relished the, the chance, and I got to work hand-in-hand hand with those guys, and I didn't want to get in the way. I didn't want to overwhelm them because it's the biggest job interview they're going to be in. And I just simply said, if, if you need anything, I'm here to support you. If you got any questions, and some came with questions, and some wanted to hear a little bit of my story. And the biggest thing I said to them was, you're all talented, each and every one of you. You wouldn't be here if you weren't. It's what you do from Sunday to Sunday. That's the difference. Um, because I was the most talented coming out then, and I wasn't able to do what it took Sunday to Sunday. And I said, you know, just because you're a great football player doesn't mean you're a great person. And it's important to build that foundation because whatever follows, whether it's a long career or a short career, it's important that you've built that foundation. That was my main my main point. You know, we talked a little bit about technique, fundamentals, um, but I was more there for the emotional and, and supportive side of things. You want us to run this video because I asked my staff. I said, I don't want to embarrass Ryan. <laughs> I don't want to run this video. And you like it run because I want you to watch this video again and you tell me, what the now evolved Ryan Leaf sees with the young Ryan Leaf and all that pressure, coaches getting fired. Let's roll this tape from your rookie year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't talk to me, all right? Knock it off! So that's an overwhelmed young quarterback. What do you see? Well, it's, it's, it's my most embarrassing moment in my life. And that's with arrests and mug shots. Because at least in those moments, I'm taking accountability for my actions. That right there is just a petulant child blaming others, trying to be dominant over somebody who's just doing their job. And that's why that's embarrassing. And it's, it's easily can happen to anybody. Oh, and I absolutely. Was, and I was just not emotionally ready to deal with that. And it, I played the worst game of my career. You know, a guy who had been sex successful at every level, and I went out and just laid an egg. And instead of doing – I always go back to the Tim, Tim Tebow effect. After that Ole Miss game where they lost by one. Yeah. And he shows up at the podium almost crying. In passion. In passion, saying, this is not going to happen again, not on my watch. I'm going to work my tail off so this never happens again. He, take, he took full accountability when it may not even have been any of his fault. That is the perfect way for a quarterback – to deal with any kind of failure. You're the leader of the team. If I'd have walked in front of everybody and said, this is on me, guys. I'll be here every second of every day so something like that doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. That's the response. I just was so, you know, you, you, you don't. You're a 22-year-old kid. You were a kid. And I never took accountability. I wasn't accountable to anybody or, anybody or anything. You were almost, could I make the argument, Brian, that you were so gifted, things came easy. And that was the first stress. Yep. I mean, and you were so – you were, Little League, high school, yeah. college. You were the best player. Yet I, I remember I've, – I've told this on the air before. I thought you were better than Peyton Manning because Peyton Manning's feet bothered me. And I said anybody that can lead that Washington State talent to a Rose Bowl is better than Peyton Manning because Tennessee at the time was like a top-two program. And I remember really strongly believing this, and I've used this example, is that that's why quarterback to some degree, everybody passed on Drew Brees. Everybody passed on Derek Carr. Some of this stuff, it's all guessing, even for Belichick. He passed on Tom five times. So at the end, you were just a kid that faced stress for the first time and didn't have the support system. I wasn't capable of coping. Like I said, talent at that level is talent. Everybody's talented. And I may have been the most talented in that draft for sure. Physically, if you put me in a physical competition, I was most likely going to win out. You put me in a you know, social environment and how to deal with stress <laughs> and how to be uh, mm -hmm. um, sociable with other people, that was the difficulty because I, I didn't take compliments well. Um, I didn't certainly didn't take criticism well. And then anytime a lot of stress is placed on you, uh, and there is in that point, um, and you're the leader, supposed to be the leader of men at 22 years old, and you're not capable of leading yourself, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, it should be noted again. They fired your head coach, fifth game. <laughs> June Jones, who probably should have taken the job, he didn't. He went to Hawaii. They gave it to Mike Riley, wonderful guy, but was kind of a 500 or below coach for some of his college career. And Mike's personality to me is not quite NFL-ish, in my opinion. So it didn't work out. I'm really happy for you, though. You're now the program ambassador at Transcend Recovery. Explain that. Yeah, we're just right down the street. We're literally at Westwood and Pico. 
so um, our, our offices and I got the luxury uh, and, a, and an unbelievable honor to be asked to work for a company where we help people with uh, mental health and substance abuse problems. And I get to just simply really just tell my story and try to be somebody that they can relate to. And then I have this apparatus behind me that does all this great work and I don't have to take all that stress on my shoulders and I can just, you know, know I did my part, kind of stay out of the result and just keep doing that each day and work on me as trying to be a better person. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Thanks for having me. It's great seeing you. You too.